Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, and tonight I'm checking out Annex 16.1. This is a wrap-up release and a bug fix release. It's basically a, a wrap-up of all the updates that have happened since the release of Annex 16. Uh, we'll scroll down here, January 17th, Annex 16.1. What's new? Well, not a lot, but there are two new apps. So let's crack, oh, uh, that's the uh, the new live kernel updater and the live USB maker for updates. to uh, The live kernel updater updates your kernel on the live system, which is some, something that's been you know hard to do in the past. And then the live USB maker is our own special tool for making live USBs. Uh, again, full base, core libre editions. The explanations are here. Uh, check them out. The links are here at annex.mephis.org. So let's fire one up. Now, I'm on my MX machine right now, but I've got these set up in VirtualBox for a very good reason. One, I want to show you the difference between UF UEFI boot and 32-bit boot. So I'm going to start up the 32-bit virtual machine. These are set to scale, so if it looks a little funky, bear with it. I want you to be able to see it. So this is the classic legacy boot mode. You'll see we have the safe video options. We've got boot from the hard disk to skip the, the live bootloader. And then we have at the bottom here, we have all of the uh, options. So you can set your language here with F2. Uh, with F3, you can set your time zone. With F4, we have a bunch of options here for various uh, parameters you may or may not need to, to be honest with you. Uh, um, uh, F5 is the persistence menu so persist all is the classic load the root persistence file into RAM it's very fast uh, but it does need to sync occasionally or or save okay uh, and then we have the persistent root all root only and the persist static which is just like persist all except it all in a file that doesn't go into RAM. It just sits on the hard drive, on the USB stick, all the time. And there are some frugal options as well uh, here, some frugal install options. Although you do still need the USB stick or the ability to edit your own bootloader. The frugal install doesn't modify any bootloaders. Okay. Uh, F6 lets you choose your desktop. Now this is kind of neat because the default is the Rocks IceWim desktop, but you have all these options, including the Herb's Luft WM, which I'm not going to load into, but it has been re it has been changed. The boot up that has been changed to give you some keys so that you can navigate it a little bit. Maybe we'll take a look at that sometime. Um, and then F7 lets you choose some console resolutions as we boot. Okay, so that is the legacy boot menu. That's what you're going to get when you see the legacy boot menu. All the options set from the little we call them the function, the F menus or the function key menus. And if you want to know what an option is, just hit F1, and the help system is available <laughs> from the bootloader. I mean, that's kind of cool. Come on, give me, give them some props. That's kind of cool. Okay, so that's the legacy bootloader. Let's shrink this down and start up the 64, the UEFI 64-bit system. Let me set it to scale. It's because it's not set to scale right now. Let's see. So. This is what it looks like, and you're going to get, you notice the function keys are gone, but you get this little bar here counting down. It's a different boot system uh, when we're booting UFI. So if you come up, you'll notice that there is a, the menu options are different. If we go to advanced, you see we got all the fail safes, the power offs, the reboots are here. But if you go to custom boot, that's where all the funky options are. So here we can set our language. And I'm I'm the default English language. Uh, time zones, the default for me works. Uh, let's see here. I don't need anything on this page. And I'm running off. Uh, let's see. You can do some do some tricks with the auto mount system here. Auto mounting on or off. It's enabled by default. Uh, and this persistence options. I'm not going to choose a persistence option because I'm. This is technically a live CD instead of a USB, so it's not going to do anything. And here you can set it uh, a, a font a font size. This is like setting the DPI. This is like a multiplier of 96. Okay, so 0.83 is less than what you might think, and then two would be twice as big. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone because it's it's appropriate for my laptop. And here you can set a default desktop. I am going to choose the space F, uh, the uh, default desktop, which is two or one, actually. But you can also choose one of the others. And um, uh, if you're running on live USB, it'll remember what you chose the last time. 
and stuff it all into a custom boot entry that will be available for you next time you boot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to go with the default here, all the defaults. It's not going to offer to save. If I was on a live USB, it would offer to save. Uh, and then uh, it would save the uh, save all that into a custom boot entry. So instead, on that first boot screen, instead of custom, you would have... Well, it would say custom, but it, it's 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 your boot options already saved in that boot entry, the ones you picked the last time. So it's pretty cool. So here we are back into Antics, and it looks just like Antics 16 looked because it's exactly the same as far as theming goes. We got the the wallpapers and everything. This is the default Rock's desktop. Um, uh, auto mounting of USB sticks does work. I know that is a a. Uh, Thing people a lot of people have trouble with with the rocks filer coming from Puppy they don't realize Puppy's got some tricks built into it it's basically us and Puppy using rocks okay and uh, they got some tricks built in well we got our own tricks built into this now so uh, it, they, they will work but they won't show up anywhere on the desktop like in Puppy it'll be in slash media down in here okay um, so uh, again this is running in VirtualBox obviously. Uh, up here in the Conky, you've got, we've got auto. It tells you whether the auto mounts are enabled, the DPI size, the resolution. Although my resolution is funky because it's VirtualBox. Okay. Uh, so what's new? Uh, nothing. I mean, it's it's everything's up to date, but there's nothing new. It's got the latest Debian uh, version bump built in, uh, and all that stuff. Now, one of the cool things this year, a lot of people don't realize, uh, there were some complaints the last time because Herb's Luft was on this other desktop's menu. It is now gone. Okay, it's still here. You can get to it from the Slim Login Manager, but it is uh, not here. So I'm gonna fire up Space JWM, Joe's Window Manager. Here we are. You see it. It does everything. It processes all the files again. And now here we are in JWM. You see everything's the same, um, just a different window manager. Except you'll notice that it says space up here. That's because now my file manager links are going to open Space FM. And this is one of the new things is the Space FM has a somewhat saner default configuration. It's still not perfect, but it's a uh, it's a step in the right direction. So this is basically Antic 16.1. It runs great on low end hardware. Uh, you know what? Let's fire up the other virtual machine. It's still running, and let's see what kind of RAM usage we get on the 32-bit version. Now you can see the boot's slightly different on the 32-bit because there's no UEFI frame buffer, so you get this antics, uh, you get this antics border around the console, which is kind of fun. Um, I think maybe it's not that fun. I don't know. I think it's fun. You don't see anybody out there decorating the console, okay? It's, we still care about that kind of thing. So you can see now here we are running live with a full antic system, 73.5 megs of RAM. Um, that's kind of sort of phenomenal for this day and age, even for a 32-bit system. Let me, uh, where's it here? Where's the Fire Browser? File Browser is Firefox ESR. Now this is like Ice Weasel used to be. It's the extended support version of, of Firefox. But you can see with Firefox open, and with three tabs, one of which being the Annex Forum, we're only using 228 megs of RAM. Yowzers. That's like no RAM. That's like my laptop from 2000. Well, my laptop from 1997 can run. It has that much RAM. That's kind of cool. So maybe I'll try to take this and install it on my old uh, my old Sony laptop. Hey, the installer is the same old installer. You can choose your repos. I'm going to keep it with Jesse, but the testing repos, Debian stretch, Debian testing has gone stable. Well, it's gone mostly frozen, okay? Um, technically speaking, there's there's still the opportunity to put in some bug fixes uh, and such. but So you can use those. They're going to be pretty solid right now. Uh, but I'm going to stick with the Jesse ones because I'm a stable kind of guy. And now the installer runs, and it's the same installer that Mepis used to use, it's the same installer that MX uses for the most part. Um, theming's a little different, but that's really the only major difference. Uh, and if you're booting Legacy, you can use the auto install. If you're booting UEFI, uh, you cannot use the auto install. And you have to partition partition everything manually uh, with your UEFI, uh, just so you're aware. So if we go, let's see, next, do we want to format the entire disk? Yes. And off it goes. It's off to the races. And it's a pretty quick installation. Um, probably 
five minutes or so. So uh, even in VirtualBox. Now, obviously, that depends on your hardware. Uh, Antics being meant for older computers um, is, you know, your machine matters to that. So five minutes on a on a Core i5 might be, you know, 20 minutes on a Pentium 4 or something, or longer. Um, I, the last time I installed Annex on real hardware, it's running it's running an EPC, an old an old old little netbook that I've turned into a media player, um, streaming media player, and it's uh it's still running Annex 15. But that took a little while to get it installed on there because that that system the 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 what you call it the uh, the Atom processor it's a first generation Atom processor on that machine and it is slow single core uh, it it basically hates being on okay um, I think it came with Windows seven starter or something which is ridiculous for that machine that machine couldn't run that. Um, uh, I don't know. It, maybe it ran Windows XP. I think it ran Windows XP. Windows XP wasn't too bad. At any rate, it's really slow, but it's running Annex 15 as my media center just fine. I got a little VNC server set up on it. I can I can dial into it and 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 see what's uh uh and use it from far. Uh, I can control I can control it with my phone. <laughs> maybe I'll do a video on that. Maybe I'll I'll take the thing apart and update it for Annex 16. That might be fun. Um, uh, stream my stream my Pandora and stream my Spotify and 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 run it all from the Android phone, which is kind of cool. Even set up a Samba server on it so I could update the media files, the music files from afar. Okay, so choose where you want to install it. If you install EF UFI, you're going to get the ESP option too. That's the uh, EFI system partition. But uh, for most people, you want to start it, install it in the MBR. That's where you want it. Yes, install it in the MBR. And you see, I babbled all the way through that installation, all through the file copy. Everything else is fairly short. Grub can take some time sometimes. All right, there we go. Computer name, fine. It's fine. Samba server is not installed by default in Annex 16, just so you're aware. You can access Samba shares. Um, SIF Utils is, is, is installed and all that, but you can't... Uh, you can't uh, there's some, you can't host a share without without installing Samba, and there's an easy to install option for that. We do have cups though. We got a bunch of other stuff here. I'm gonna leave it be because it's I'm happy with it. Uh, click next, and my award-winning name. Ha! And uh, next. Now the save live to desktop changes. If I'd made a change to the desktop, it would copy those over to the new to the new user account uh, so they'd be available on reboot which is pretty nice if you go and, and install something like a, a wallpaper or put some icons on the desktop or something like that so we're finished we're gonna reboot yep again the pretty uh, console on the legacy boot okay eject the disk restart I'm gonna turn the scaling off so that we get a little better representation of what it looks like that wide screen screen action was was a virtual box stretching the screen. Okay, it wasn't wasn't really Annex. So here we go. Okay, here's the slim login. Now if you want to choose a different desktop other than what you had running before or the default, in my case, you just hit F1 and you can see you scroll through, I'm hitting F1, it scrolls through all the various options and it just cycles around. Uh, I'm going to choose Space Fluxbox. And here comes Space Fluxbox coming up. And there we go. It's up and running. I'm using uh, 94 megabytes. Space FM's a little heavier. The Space FM desktop's a little heavier than the Rox Pinboard. Uh, you can put uh, this, the, the screen's more like a traditional desktop with, uh, with, uh, 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 you can drag, you know, it's like a folder. You can drag files to it and everything. So anyway, there we go. There we are. We're off and running. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to antics.mepis.org or throw up a post at antics.freeforms.org. Sorry. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.